field. So just sit back and relax and learn as much as you can so that you can um, participate in the build with us when we're finished. All right, so let's go. As we think about fireflies today, not everybody experiences these. Some of you may not have seen fireflies or lightning bugs in your area, but we're gonna learn a little bit about them and then we're gonna try to build our own. So here is our agenda for today. Magic, science, the arts, and our challenge. And let's take a look at a video while I share a little bit about fireflies. So we know that fireflies are familiar to everyone, but not everyone sees them. I want you to know right off the bat that these are insects are actually beetles and they only come out at night. Most of them are winged. There are about 2000 firefly species and these insects live in a variety of warm environments. Um, we most normally see these on summer evenings. They love moisture. They have, a, the way they got their name is called bioluminescence. It's a big word, but our expert is gonna explain that to us. Fireflies have dedicated light organs that are located under their abdomens and the insects take in oxygen and it combines it with a special substance called luciferin and it produces light. But these, this light has no heat with it. Firefly light can be used as a defense mechanism also. So today we're gonna learn from the experts and see how fireflies can bring us joy. Our first expert that we're gonna hear from today is, um, well, let's wait on that one. Let's go ahead and go to our firefly magic. I got it. Looks like my screen's not coming up there and I don't know why. There we go. Fireflies appear in a lot of Native American folklore. There's an Apache legend in which the trickster fox tries to steal fire from the entire firefly village. So to accomplish this, he fools them and manages to set his own tail on fire. Well, he sets his own tail on fire and it sort of puts a, a fire in the village. And as he tries to escape, he is punished and the fireflies told the fox that he would never be able to use fire himself, so it was transferred over to a firefly. Do you wanna know something pretty cool about fireflies? In only two places in the world, there's a phenomenon called simultaneous bioluminescence. Don't worry, I'm not gonna make you spell that. That just means that all the fireflies in the area sync up their flashes so they light up at exactly the same time. And the only place in the world you can see this is in Southeast Asia and the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. So before we listen to, let's let that one more person. Before we listen to uh, our expert, let me tell you a few jokes. You can put your answers in the chat window, okay? What kind of cars do lightning bugs drive? Who has an answer for the chat window? What kind of cars do lightning bugs drive? Anyone? Lightning McQueen. I love that. That probably should be the answer, but the answer I found was a glow cart. You get it? Go-kart, glow-kart. How are fireflies eco-friendly? How are fireflies eco-friendly? I'll let you know, they glow green. One more, why was the mommy firefly so sad? Why was the mommy firefly so sad. 
she was single. <laughs> well, she actually was after after the fire, the daddies died, but actually it's her children were not very bright. Her children didn't go, I see you laughing there, Taylor. Thank you for laughing at my joke. You're the only person I saw laugh. Okay, Angel uh, Angelica, I saw you laughing too. All right, so let's learn a bit about the science. We are going to be speaking to Dr. Clyde Sorson. He is an entomologist, which means he plays with bugs and insects all day long. He's from North Carolina, and he is a professor at North Carolina State University. And we had a long conversation with him, but he's for this little episode, he's just going to share his work with the synchronous fireflies because he is the guy who found them. So here we go. Well, one of the things that really in, inspires people is the, the idea of the synchronous fireflies that you can see at certain times of the year where they're very active. Um, why is it just certain times or, or is it? So uh, the synchronous firefly phenomenon is it's a pretty spectacular thing. I, I think it's something that everybody ought to have a chance to see, even though right now there aren't enough opportunities for everybody to have that chance. I think it's something that everybody um, should try and witness at some point or another. So with the synchronous fireflies, um, what we're seeing is under really high population levels, the male fireflies who do most of the risky business of flying around looking for females, um, synchronize their flash patterns and um, it's not exactly clear to us why they do that but it only happens when their populations achieve a certain kind of density in north america in eastern north america we have um, so far that we know two species that synchronize um, one that's found in the appalachian mountains from probably from at least northern Georgia all the way up into um, at least Pennsylvania. And another species that occurs in the lowlands of the coastal plain of the southeastern United States um, that uh, typically lives in more um, kind of wetland habitats. And so both of these species, the one in the mountains, I'm going to throw some scientific names at you, but they're really cool scientific names. At least one of them I think is really cool because it is actually honoring my home state here. Um, the one that occurs in the mountains is called Photinus carolinus. So it's the Carolina firefly. And um, this is the one that we've known about as a synchronous species for a lot longer. It's really, really famous because of the big aggregations that happen in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park um, at Elkmont. Um, there are several other places that I know of where this species um, occurs in densities high enough to synchronize. Um, and I'm kind of reluctant to advertise them because uh, like many of these phenomena, if, if they're not managed carefully, they can go away. But anyhow, that's the species in the mountains. And it typically, um, at, the la at the elevation of Smokemont, it typically kind of peaks around Memorial Day, give or take a couple of weeks. Um, and it peaks for about two weeks. And that happens because this firefly has about a one year life cycle. And the adult part of its life cycle is actually the shortest part mm -hmm. of its life cycle. Um, well, I guess maybe the eggs might be shorter, but anyway, um, this, the shortest part of its mobile <laughs> life cycle, let's put it that way. Um, and so they're active for two or three weeks to mate, to, uh, allow the females to lay eggs, to start the cycle over again. Um, the species that occurs in the lowlands is called Photurus frontalis which actually that species lives in my backyard and I see them every spring. And it similarly has a life cycle that lasts about a year with an adult stage that lasts a couple weeks. Most fireflies 
Um, not all for sure. There are some really weird exceptions. Most fireflies as adults don't eat much, if anything. Their main job in the world is to find a mate mm -hmm. and make sure the species continues. And so that's why they don't live all that long and why that phenomenon is fairly uh, brief. There are a couple other species that have much longer flight periods and species that people might be a lot more familiar with in their own yards. Well, we have a lot of students watching today and we'll, and we'll watch this in their classrooms. What is something they could do to help with the work of your research and other researchers? So um, one thing that anybody can do um, is uh, they can try and uh, um, learn about fireflies to begin with, and then they can help help us learn about the fireflies in North Carolina, for instance, by looking for the fireflies that occur in their yard. And if they can, um, you know, tell us what kinds they're finding or the flash patterns that they're observing, um, and then that'll improve our knowledge of the distribution of fireflies. I live in Johnston County and I work in Wake County. Um, so I don't have a lot of opportunity to see what kind of fireflies are living in uh, Cleveland County or in Pasquotank County. And so, you know, if you have students that are living in those areas that want to take the time to try and learn about fireflies and to recognize, real importantly, recognize their, their flash patterns, which is not hard. It's, it's basically like learning bird calls, but with your eyes. Um, then they can help us learn and in, in, increase our knowledge of the distribution of the fireflies in North Carolina. And fireflies uh, are, I mean, they're really cool because they make light, but they're also ecologically important because they're predators in the ecosystems that they live in. And some fireflies are prey for other things. And they also can be very important um, bellwethers, very important canaries in the coal mine. Um, for telling us about the health of, of different ecosystems because some of them have very specific ecological um, requirements and they're very susceptible to disruption. And so if anybody can help us learn more about the distribution of the different species of fireflies in North Carolina, that's increasing our, our knowledge and that's increasing our ability maybe to help protect and manage these really cool critters. So there's a lot of science there, and we want you to do some research into these beautiful beetles that light up, but also other animals, insects that you found around your area. So I found this little guy, and although you probably can't see, he lights up, and that's just a fun toy. But then I met a guy named Keith who had a Kickstarter project, and he created this. So this is a genius firefly notification caller, big words. So what it does, it has an app that you go to and you can upload different signals for fireflies around the country. And already programmed into this one is a male firefly. So if I were to sit outside at night and press this one time, it would go through a, a, a series of signals. And if I was very quiet, female fireflies would start coming over to this because it sees the light. You can also with the app upload the female signals. So you could be sitting down very quietly outside in the dark and click on this button and the fireflies would see the signals, the lights that are emitted from this and be able to come to you. So there are a lot of people out there working on ways for you to see fireflies and observe fireflies. Maybe one of you out there will have an idea for an app to call for fireflies or other animals. So think about that. So we've talked a little bit about some information, the magic behind it, the Native American tales, the fun tales. We know a little bit about the science, but then I met this guy named Radim Schreiber. And Radim Schreiber is a nature photographer. Now he's gonna tell us a little bit about what he does. And he also has done a series for Netflix called Alien Worlds. So let's go and meet 
Radim Schreiber. Hello, hello. Hey, how are you? Better, good, how are you doing? Good, thank you so much for taking some time to talk with me today. I, I know the kids would just love to hear a little bit about you and, and how you got into what you do right now. So my name is Radim Schreiber and for the last 12 years, I have been photographing fireflies. And in the recent years, it has become more than just a hobby, it became my profession. So I am a full-time artist and I just love photographing fireflies. I grew up in Czech Republic and in Czech Republic, we don't have fireflies like <laughs> here in the United States. You can find them, but they're extremely rare. So most people have never seen them in Czech. And when I was in school, I fall in love with, na with uh, nature photography. I've always had love for nature since I was in Boy Scouts and my parents encouraged me to go for hikes and camping and all that. So when I was in school and I was photographing nature, I started to specialize on insects which became my big project in end of my BFA um, studies. And one day I realized, well, how cool would it be to take a picture of a firefly on a blade of grass with the moon behind? I mean, glowing and just capturing that moment as it lights up. And one of my photographs, the Ember Firefly has won the Smithsonian Photography Contest, the first prize in nature category. And I was super thrilled. So this was one of the things that really propelled my desire to continue the work with fireflies. Not just, I haven't been photographing just here in, in Iowa, but I have been traveling to the Smoky Mountains. And it, I even traveled to photograph fireflies in other countries. I went to Thailand and Taiwan and Malaysia. And I have learned such a great deal about fireflies. And I have found out that there are more than 2000 different species of fireflies in the world. And some of them, as you may know, even synchronize. Um, so I have, I have been just excited about learning about fireflies, discovering them and most importantly, I have enjoyed the beautiful, I would say almost transcendental connections that I can have at night when I am in peace and just witnessing this beauty and this magic of nature, these little, little lights that are always this hopeful joy, even in the darkest night. Radim, I watched the Netflix Alien World the other night but it had your fireflies on it. How, how was that? Was that fun to do? Yeah, no, absolutely. That was a, uh, that was a treat. So that was the second episode of the Alien Worlds on Netflix. And I think one of the, the most interesting things was that I was working with a team of people and we had an objective and usually I'm I'm working alone and I have my own agenda and my own needs and all that and, you know, sharing it um, with the world myself. But here we had a team of, I think, six or seven people. And, and so I was uh, kind of a part of a bigger picture and, and I learned a lot. So it was a great learning experience. I learned a lot from the other filmmakers. So it was a really great great experience, learning experience. I love that this will speak to students who, you know, may not have the, the skills for other different fields, but they're really good in the art. So not only a photographing, they could paint, they could draw oh, yeah. from nature um, and evidently make a really great living doing that, you know, from your first firefly photo, which was in 2000. And, did you say eight um the first firefly photo which was up close it was about 2008 so you talked about today working with a team so collaborating and then also communicating you communicated 
story of fireflies with sometimes no words. So that's what we want our kids to do. So thank you so much, Radim, for joining us today. We can't wait to dig into your website and I'm encouraging all kids to watch the Netflix um, series, Alien Worlds, episode two, do that one first. <laughs> that's right. All right, kids, so now it's your turn. We are gonna ask you to create a firefly out of recyclable materials. So this could be an art project, it could be a painting, it could be a photograph that you get of a firefly and then use recyclable materials. We want you to use the knowledge that you learned today so that once the firefly is created, you can use the firefly as a prop to tell others about your knowledge. Now here's the bonus points. How can you light it up? So let me show you a few things here that I've brought to the table today. So I have got my materials um, from former events that we've done, but I also have these. So these are tea lights. You can get tea lights about any place, a department store, sometimes even grocery stores. But I found them at the Dollar Tree for 24 for a dollar, all right? So what you can do, if you turn them on, then you're gonna have the light. I know that's kind of hard to see. But if you pull off the back, you can pull out the battery. And if you're very careful, you can pop it out even more. Let me show you this. And now I just have the light here. And if I turn it upside down, I can just pull out the little bulb. And then I will use the battery that came with it tape the battery inside and the wires on either side. And then I can add that to my creation and I can turn this firefly on. I can make it work. So that, that's a way to do it. Another way is if you've ever been to the Dollar Tree and found a box of Christmas lights, you can get those and cut those apart so that you have the light and then on either side of it have the wires and then use a small cell battery. So again, we want you to use materials that you brought with you to make your own version of a firefly. Now you might be thinking, gosh, I wish I had pom-pom balls or fabric. Remember today, we're just building a prototype and then we will put that together with other materials. So I'm gonna ask that if you would like to share that you can raise your hand, but this is not like a normal, on-demand STEM, most of the work that you're going to be doing today is going to be on your own after this event is over. So remember, create a firefly. It could be a puppet. It could be a stuffed animal. It could be just made out of your recyclable materials. It could be painted. It could be sketched with crayons. Whatever you want to do to create your firefly. And then the most important part of this is then go share what you learned today with others and use your firefly as your prop. Think about younger kids that may be really interested in fireflies or just love animals. Maybe you can use your firefly and write a story about it, showing them that there's 2,000 species in the world and that only two places in the world do they synchronize or all light up at the same time. Remember, that's going to be on the east coast, well, on the eastern part of the United States, up in the Smoky Mountains, and also in Southeast Asia. Once you've done all of this, we want you to share. So let me give your teachers our Padlet for today. So teachers, if you will share this on uh, social media or on the Padlet, and I've got the actual, let me see if I can put it into the, let's see, Firefly STEM. Yep, I'm dropping it into the chat window also. So you can share what you've done. Now kids, because we've had some problems in the past with our Padlet, 
there's going to be a moderator on it. So if you upload your own, it's going to say uh, pending approval. That just means I'm going to go in and make sure that everything's good. And then I will put it onto the Padlet. Okay. It's, you've done nothing wrong, but we did an event a couple of weeks ago with uh, over a thousand students and it got a little crazy and people was just starting to have a little fun with comments. So I cut that part off. And you can still upload what you need to upload. Before we head out today, is there anyone that wants to share an experience with a firefly or an interesting bug or insect in your area before we end for today? If you do, just, just raise your hand. Oh, who is this talking? I just didn't see. Let's see. Stephanie. Stephanie, let me put you on speaker. So you have ladybugs. So do they bug you? No. I thought that was fun. They don't bug. They don't bug you. So do you have a lot of those in your area? Yeah, we usually see them next to the flowers. And yeah, and they also fly, right? They have, they have wings also. Thanks for sharing that, Stephanie. Is there anyone else that wants to share? How about someone from Indiana? I know something really neat about fireflies I found out yesterday. Can some student from Indiana tell me about why fireflies are special to Indiana? Um, sorry. sorry. So I think Ms. Schwannenkamp, you told me yesterday that um, fireflies were a state insect. Yeah, Scotty, come over here. She can hear you. Over. Yeah, I can hear you, Patty. Go ahead and tell us. Um, so the firefly is Indiana state insect. We just, um, we used, yeah, in the last couple of years we got it. We used to not have one, but then uh, we got the fireflies, our state insect. Yeah, so that's a real important thing. A lot of times states don't have all of the different animals or birds or, or ice creams or drinks or whatever that are their state beverage or state boats or state dogs. But kids can sometimes lobby together in classrooms and present to um, their government to say, hey, we have a lot of these, or we really like these. Can this be part of our state heritage? So I'm glad that that was lobbied so that Indiana now has that state, or Fireflies a State Insect. In North Carolina, about 25 years ago, some students in a, the eastern part of our state wanted the sweet potato to be the state vegetable, and we didn't have a state vegetable. So they got together with each other, and then with their teacher, and then with their school, and they actually um, got North Carolina to pass that. So now we have sweet potatoes as our vegetable. Miss Fredericks is from Pennsylvania and she says that she watches fireflies every summer in the backyard that they come out in July um, in Pennsylvania. And that is true. So the further north you go, the further into the summer, the fireflies come out. Several of you on this call are uh, Miss Fredericks and Miss Schrenenkamp are going to Acadia this summer. And we're going to Acadia right at the time that Firefly should be peaking there, which is exciting. Is there any other student or classroom that wants to share um, about what they're going to create or about an insect that's pretty special to their area? Just unmute and tell me. See hands going up, but I don't, I can't, I can't unmute you in the classroom. So if you want to share, feel free to come up to the screen. Looks like Miss Speck is coming up. Let's see. I've just asked you to unmute Miss Speck. See if that works now. There. Oh, you were almost, you, it almost had you. I'm gonna ask you, there you go. Now you're unmuted. Can you talk, talk now? Still not working or yes? Okay, well, maybe you can throw it in the chat window. 
We are so glad that you joined us today, guys. We are actually going to be taking a break for a little while with on-demand STEM and our events. So we hope to come back in early August. So what I'm going to ask you to do is what do you want to learn about? What are things that you're just really interested in that you would like to see some virtual events so we can get some um, famous people maybe to even answer your questions? So ask your teacher or tell your teacher what you're interested in and have them make a list and they can send it to us and we will try to get some new on demand started in August based on your questions. So again, thank you so much for joining us today. I can't wait to see what you create, whether as a puppet or something out of a box or maybe an old pair of blue jeans that don't fit anymore and you've asked your mom permission first and you cut those up and turn those into a firefly. And we have a couple more things. Let me, so Miss Bauman's class says alligators, Everglades, invasive species, crocodile, the ocean, penguins, hermit crabs, Oh my goodness, we're going to be so busy this summer filming all of this for you. Thank you for joining us. Don't ever stop learning. I hope that you guys have a good end of the school year and we will see you the beginning of August. Have a great, great summer, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Can't wait to see you in the um, in August. Have a wonderful summer. Stay safe. Learn as much as you can. Read, 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 and have a lot of fun.